let's put the main JoJo's into the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. If we kept them as the same characters and turned their stands into cursed techniques, who would excel the most and be the best sorcerer? There is a lot to consider when doing this. First of all, we need to translate the powers accurately into JJK. But we're not just talking about the powers here either. We need to talk about who would be the best in terms of personality, in terms of their strategies, everything. By the way, this video won't have any major plot spoilers for either series, but it will cover spoilers regarding standability specifically. There's a few important factors that we'll go over for each person. First of all, and most obviously, their stand ability translating into a cursed technique. Alongside that, we need to consider their strength as is. JoJo characters can actually translate pretty well into JJK's universe, at least when it comes to their raw strength. We'll also need to consider their personality and intellect, because as we know in JJK, that's a big part of what makes you a successful sorcerer. Also, we don't even need to necessarily remove their stands. Their stands would fit perfectly as Shikigami, or even similar to how Rika currently works with Yuta's technique. There are multiple ways to implement them, and there are a good amount of cursed techniques that actually use Shikigami to help them with battles. And I'm not just talking about Megami, there's actually a few other examples. Higuruma's Judge Man acts as a judge. Junpei's Moondrags helped him deliver his poison. Yuki's Garuda actually works in tandem with her during a fight. That just makes this even easier too, so they're not just going to have their stands abilities, they could actually have their stands working alongside them, at least as a medium to use their technique and such. And as a disclaimer, don't interpret this as me scaling the JoJo's because that's not what this is at all. We're setting them into a completely different story and seeing how well their abilities would translate into JJK and how they'd perform a sorcerer specifically. And the grading system in JJK isn't simply based on power, so even if I rank a JoJo higher than another here, that's not necessarily me scaling them in their own verse. So just don't misinterpret that. We'll start with Jonathan, who actually is a little bit weird to put into here. The main issue being we've never actually seen him use a stand. So Jonathan actually does have a stand and we got to see Dio use it briefly. It seems to be similar to Hermit Purple. Although Jonathan himself has never used it and we never actually get to see its true abilities. So for the sake of this video, we'll assume it works just like Hermit Purple because it looks like it too. And it was used in a similar way. And it actually is called Hermit Purple in one of the video games. But to avoid any confusion in the video, we'll refer to it as the Passion because that's what it's called in George Joestar. And that'll be the name of his cursed technique. Basically, it'll let him generate vines that also have psychic properties, which could be useful in multiple aspects. Obviously, the way we see Joseph using his vines in the main series, he could use them for traversal. He could use them as ropes. He could use them as whips for fighting. He could use them to track things, which makes them useful for recon and things like that. They could also override certain electronics, and, of course, they act as Hamon conductors. Which is another reason Jonathan's kind of weird to place in here, because how would Hamon translate over? Well, simply put, we'll translate his mastery of Hamon into mastery of cursed energy. That's the simplest way to do this, and we'll just say the Passion is able to actually transmit cursed energy really well too. And if we just translate all the abilities of Hamon right into cursed energy, not only does it fit really well, but it would make Jonathan pretty overpowered as a sorcerer. For one, Hamon actually has healing properties, which means it could apply a reverse cursed technique, so maybe Jonathan would have some sort of access to that. Plus, translating this into cursed energy would mean he has huge amounts of cursed energy to begin with, and he'd be able to control it really easily too. And since Jonathan actually does have a sword at some points, we'll say that's a cursed tool for him as well. And combining that with the passion can make him an even more formidable swordsman. And on top of this, I feel like he'd be a really dedicated sorcerer. Knowing how motivated and persistent Jonathan is in order to achieve his goals, he'd probably have a ton of great techniques. And especially with him being a swordsman, he'd probably even try and get a simple domain for himself too. In a way, he'd kind of be like a mix of Yuta, Yuji, and Toto. He would fight like Yuta as a swordsman, having a bunch of energy that he can control in his sword. Toto in the sense that he'd have such great control over his cursed energy that he could use it for pretty much anything and react on an instant. And Yuji because of his personality. Honestly, the weirdest thing here might be his personality itself, because like Yuji, at least early Yuji, he's way too compassionate, which could hinder him as a sorcerer. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but he would have a learning curve in terms of what it takes to be a sorcerer, but Jonathan has the willpower to brave through it. So he might struggle at first as a sorcerer, but once he adapts to the cruel reality of what a sorcerer is, and after getting a better grasp on his techniques, he might be one of the best. I'd place him as a grade one swordsman, deadly power and defenses, with reverse curse technique as well, and if we're assuming he has the passion, he'd probably be able to work it really well as a sorcerer. Next we have Joseph, and basically everything I said about the passion for Jonathan, that applies to Joseph as well, so we won't really be covering his stand here. Same goes for Hamon because, just like Jonathan, these two are the only ones that actually used Hamon, so this all applies to him as well, probably more so than Jonathan too. Where they differ is how they'll fight, how they'll use their curse technique, and of course their personality. Oh yeah, and he won't be using a sword as a curse tool like Jonathan does, but he could probably even use his clackers. And by the way, let's use young Joseph for this. Even though we don't see him use a stand until he's old Joseph, well, we did that for Jonathan who didn't have a stand in the first place, so for everything here we'll use part 2 Joseph with Hermit Purple. And even though his abilities are pretty much the exact same as Jonathan here, I feel like he'd excel way more. And going back to those comparisons I made for Jonathan, as for Joseph, he'd really be like Toto as a fighter, I think. If the two even knew each other, they'd probably become brothers too. 
In terms of his personality, he's actually one of the best suited to be a sorcerer. He's willing to do anything necessary to win, which is not only good in terms of strategy, but it means he won't be held back by some sort of pride that makes him want to win fairly or anything, which is crucial in the jujutsu world. The one issue is he doesn't like working hard, which Gojo has pointed out before as a fatal flaw for someone like Megumi. For different reasons, of course, but Megumi wasn't giving it his 100%, and that kind of held him back, which might also affect Joseph negatively, at least when we look at how Joseph used to act in Part 2 early on. However, I feel like his personality might actually be comparable to Gojo, for example, as well. An extroverted, jovial, and confident person who doesn't necessarily like authority, but will still go to great lengths to protect the people who he's fond of, even though he might seem selfish on the surface. Plus, he's got a great knack for battle, and he's a really smart strategist and can think really quickly, and can pretty quickly predict what an opponent's gonna do next. He might not have the strongest cursed technique, but I feel like the way he'd use it would actually make him excel. And this is also shown in JJK too, the way you use a technique is more important than your actual power behind it. So he could probably make this a pretty deadly technique. And he's perfectly suited to be a sorcerer on top of that, plus he'd have all the benefits that I mentioned for Jonathan. I feel like he'd be an easy grade 1 here. And probably one of the best Jojo sorcerers on this list. Next, we'll go to Jotaro. This is the first time where we have someone with an actual stand behind them. At least in the sense that he has a punchy ghost behind him, so Star Platinum would be his Shikigami. Once again, we have another weird case here, and I know we started out with a bunch of these, but I promise it's not going to be like this for the rest of them. And that's because of how Jotaro's ability works. Star Platinum just works as big, strong, punchy ghost. And I guess outside of Star Finger, he doesn't really have anything to use for a unique technique besides raw power, at least not until he unlocks the world. And that's why it's weird to translate it into his cursed technique, because how would that work? If his cursed technique is the world and he could just stop time on a whim whenever and wherever, that actually might be enough to place him as a special grade sorcerer. Or at the very least a grade 1, because the only similar techniques I could think of are Nabito and Naoya. And yeah, their techniques aren't similar at all, but it's really the closest thing we can compare it to, since their techniques can also slow opponents down and speed them up. So there's two ways we could put Jotaro into the series here. We could make him really overpowered and say, the world is his technique. Or the way that I'd actually see it, his curse technique would just be Star Platinum, but his domain would be the world. And not everyone has to have a domain, but Jotaro I think would be perfect for it, because the way the world works, it's perfect for a domain expansion especially with the fact that he can't necessarily just spam the world whenever he wants. And this has a couple implications. Star Platinum is usually regarded as one of the strongest stands in terms of raw attack power, so Jotaro and his curse technique for that matter, they'd be amazing in raw combat. And yeah, I guess we could put Star Finger as part of his technique too. But given how his stand works and how great he is as a fighter, if we use it like this where the world is actually a domain for him, and Star Platinum is just his regular technique, as well as a Shikigami, he'd kind of be like Maki or Toji as a fighter except if they had curse techniques since he would just excel in straight combat, although with the added bonus of him actually having cursed energy, and having a pretty overpowered domain when you think about it, one that just stops everyone in their tracks, not to mention the guaranteed hit. And the guaranteed hit could just be his stand rush, or star finger. But unlike where I said he'd be special grade if his technique was just the world, by limiting it to a just domain, that makes him a more limited fighter. And I'd say he'd probably be somewhere in the semi-grade 1 or grade 1 range. Maybe just semi-grade 1 because, just like Joseph, he might not get along with authority. And since part of the ranking is just the politics with authority, that might hold him back and get him promoted. But still, in terms of raw strength, yeah, semi-grade 1 to grade 1 seems fair. Next we have Josuke. He definitely would be cracked as a reverse curse technique user. While in Jojo his powers can't actually heal himself, that won't matter in JJK because if his curse technique at Crazy Diamond involves fixing things, he might just have innate access to reverse curse technique as is. So even though that might not apply in his series, in this series, he'd probably be able to use RCT separately. Obviously his curse technique would just be Crazy Diamond allowing him to rebuild and reform objects as well as people. Strangely enough, the closest comparison in terms of this technique is Mahito. Although unlike Mahito, he doesn't have that crazy level of soul manipulation, and he's not limited to just living things like Mahito is. Plus, he's not going to be using it recklessly and brutally like Mahito does. So it would be a slower and more limited soul manipulation, but as a trade-off, it works on inanimate objects as well. Personality-wise, it's kind of up in the air how well he'd fit as a sorcerer. He does have a strong resolve and is really compassionate after all which might work against him as a sorcerer. Plus, besides Giorno, he is the youngest Jojo, and he's also the least experienced. Although, when he's really pushed to his limit, he could fight really well. And, while I mentioned before that he might not use his ability like Mahito does, against certain opponents, if he's really pushed far, he actually might do that, considering he did fuse someone into a rock before. Although, he did kind of deserve it. Because of all this, I think he'd be around maybe a grade 2, which still is pretty strong, and he would be a great support sorcerer. The fact that he could heal himself and others, plus repair other objects too, which might even include cursed tools, and the fact that he's actually strong to begin with, it would make him a really valuable fighter. In a similar vein, next we have Giorno. Now, if you'd want to make him overpowered, yeah, give him Gold Experience Requiem as a curse technique. But we're not going to do that, because otherwise he'd be an instant special grade and he'd be one of the strongest in the verse. 
The easiest way to do this is give him gold experience to the curse technique and give him gold experience requiem as an actual domain, making him one of the JoJo's that could actually use a domain, at least without theorizing a headcanon one. Just like Josuke, he'd actually be an amazing support character, likely with some sort of innate reverse curse technique, but even without that, it doesn't matter because his whole ability allows him to heal people and himself anyways. When using gold experience, he could probably fight even similar to Megumi, given the fact that he could turn things into animals. Although, unlike Megumi, his are actual animals, and they're going to be more limited in terms of how he could use them. Plus, he won't be able to use as many and use them as rapidly as Megumi does. But still worth noting the comparison because the two could fight similar in that sense. Another interesting ability he has with gold experience is the fact that he could reflect damage. And not gold experience requiem, he actually did this with regular gold experience. Basically, his entire curse technique revolves around controlling life and such. And with the fact that he can control nature too, I guess in a sense he's like a mix of Megumi and Hanami if anything, but to a lesser extent of both of them. Basically, imagine the two of them combined, but with their powers weakened a bit in the process. So, more versatile, but not exceptionally overpowered. With gold experience, at least. One aspect of Gold Experience Requiem that we can give him in base is a simple domain. Of course, it's not nearly as strong, but it's one way we could reflect the defenses of GER being automatic. But with GER as a domain, simply put, his domain is one where the truth is never reached. You get hit by GER's guaranteed attack, and if it kills you, you get death looped, which is a really horrid way to die. And even if we limit this to a domain, that still makes it one of the most overpowered domains in the verse because Giorno is untouchable in it, and if you get killed in there, you're screwed. Besides the fact that you actually die, you die a horrible death. Everything in there will be automatic, your actions are basically erased, and really your best course of action is to hope that you don't die in there, because you probably won't be able to do much otherwise. If GER was his base technique, he'd be even more untouchable than Gojo, because GER's automatic actions are arguably a better defense than Limitless, with the added bonus that it acts as offense too. So like I said, having that as his base would make him an easy special grade and one of the strongest in the first. So that's why we limit it to a domain here. But still, even with that just as a domain, he's still pretty cracked. Like I mentioned for Josuke, yeah, he's a little bit less experienced as a fighter, but his personality would be way better suited for this, I think. He'd also be the most amazing support character on this list, and his defenses are nuts. Reverse curse technique, a simple domain, reflecting attacks. But like I mentioned, it's not like he's going to have insane raw power. But the way he uses his technique would really make up for that. We could probably place him around grade 2 to semi-grade 1, at least when just looking at his base abilities. But if he actually does have a domain that works like GER, even if it's only limited to a domain, I feel like that's still enough to place him as a special grade, since activating that against an opponent is basically an easy win. Now on to part 6 with Jolene. Stone Free would make her a great ranged fighter. It's actually going to work kind of similar to Hermit Purple in the Passion in a way. Although with a few changes because the strings obviously work way differently than how Hermit Purple works. One thing her curse technique might have is reverse curse technique because she has shown healing abilities multiple times during the series. And even if she doesn't have innate reverse curse technique, still she could use her curse technique to actually just heal herself. So at the very least she has that for injuries. She'd be pretty well rounded as a sorcerer too. Her ability is decent for mitigating damage, it's good for recon, it's good for mobility, it's good for attacking and defense, and she basically has everything here. She's basically a jack of all trades but master of none. Which is still fine because that makes her a really versatile fighter. Another thing going for her here is her personality is perfect for a sorcerer. Besides Joseph and Johnny who I'll get to later, hers is most suited for this role and I think she'd excel greatly because of that. She goes to great lengths to win fights even when facing severe injuries or needing to hurt herself in the process. This happens on multiple occasions too. She'll do anything to win the fight. She's got insane resolve and she's a pretty good strategist too. Of course, it's not like she has the greatest power or greatest defenses of any JoJo, but the fact that she's a really well-rounded fighter and the fact that her personality fits so well for this, I think it makes a good case for her to be a grade 2 or semi-grade 1, but with the most potential to actually move up from there. Given more time as a sorcerer, she'd probably be able to adapt really quickly. But given the lack of raw power at the beginning, that's what makes her start lower. Next there's Johnny, and it's another case of a hugely overpowered stand, and one that we have to kind of adjust for this. Thankfully, his is pretty easy to adjust and translate to this world and his power isn't excessive like the next guy. He actually might be a very challenging sorcerer. And one small spoiler here for those who haven't read part 7, by the end Johnny can actually walk, and this is a misconception for some reason that he still can't walk, but thanks to Smitty, he can walk again. That was his whole reason for wanting to learn it in the first place. And also, keep the ableist jokes out of the comments, because I know that happens a lot with Johnny. But it's still worth mentioning because this doesn't even apply to him anymore, so worth mentioning because it's irrelevant to the discussion. Just like Giorno, we're not going to give him his most overpowered stand as his base ability, because that's also not how it'll work for Johnny. He won't just have infinite spin right away. And with access to infinite spin, he'd be one of the strongest sorcerers of all. And with infinite spin, he's actually one of the only people that's able to touch Gojo with his ability, given the fact that his infinite spin could travel through dimensions and negate other abilities. Which is exactly why we can't just give him that right in base. Also because that's not how it works. Because obviously with infinite spin, he needs really specific conditions. So, his abilities would be Tusk Act 3, essentially. 
Although another misconception here is that Johnny can actually summon Tusk Act 4 even without a horse. It's just that he can't use the abilities of Act 4. So his curse technique, and I guess his Shikigami, they would be based on Act 4. Although he's limited to the abilities of Act 3. At least when he's not in his domain, because a perfect domain for him is just a domain that gives him innate access to infinite spin. His domain could be something based on the golden ratio that grants him infinite spin regardless, in which case he's likely unstoppable. Even with his regular curse technique limited to Tusk 3's abilities, his domain gives him golden spin with infinite energy. And since we translated Hamon into curse energy, let's translate spin into that as well. That would mean in his domain, he probably has infinite curse energy, kind of like how Hikari's domain works. So his domain's kind of like Hikari's in that sense, but way more offense-based. Plus, with the guaranteed hit and being hit by the infinite spin, it's really an insta-kill for any opponent. And if we go with the assumption that infinite spin would generate infinite cursed energy for him too, at least when we translate it that way, that would mean as long as he's able to pop off his domain once, he's pretty much fine for the rest of the fight. And with all that curse energy, if it does work like Hikari, he might just have innate reverse curse technique, which would mean his nail would just regenerate instantly after shooting them. So, in a sense, that kind of gives him infinite ammo. Johnny would be destructive and durable at the same time. Plus, I think out of any JoJo, Johnny's personality is the best suited for a sorcerer, at least when we look at how he develops throughout the story. Now again, I can't and won't go into deep spoilers, but simply put, Johnny has the willpower and the slight coldness needed to be a successful sorcerer. Plus, the quick learning and adaptability. At bare minimum, he's grade 1. But I don't think it's outlandish to put him at special grade, even if we limit Act 4 to his domain only. Similarly overpowered, we have Gappy next. Soft and Wet could be one of the hardest abilities to counter in this verse. I guess similar to Giorno and Johnny, his peak, aka go beyond, that would be limited to a domain. But even with that, soft and wet is really scary as is. First of all, explosive bubbles for offense. Being able to steal abilities and even logic itself, which he is able to do just with regular soft and wet. Soft and wet is able to take away so many things. And I guess as a comparison, it could be similar to Higuruma, but without the restriction that he actually has to win a court case. Of course, his bubbles could just be avoided or destroyed. But if you don't know they're coming, they could probably just steal anything. And if his domain is go beyond, I guess we can kind of headcanon it as an environment where he basically just controls logic as is. Because that's what Go Beyond does, it could basically just negate logic. Which would mean he's another person who could actually threaten Gojo, since Go Beyond would allow him to send his bubbles through Limitless even. His bubbles are described as something that don't even exist in this universe. These bubbles for him are imaginary things, like a certain other insanely overpowered technique from Gojo. Now, if Go Beyond was his base curse technique, he would be the strongest sorcerer, no doubt. And if we use how Go Beyond actually works, then using end of story Gappy means that Go Beyond should just be his base technique, which would make him an instant special grade and, again, the strongest in the verse, probably. Outside of his domain, the one issue that he'd have is that his bubbles would be hard to control, but in a domain, it's a guaranteed hit, so that's not even an issue. And even if we limit Go Beyond to just a domain, I still think he's special grade, mainly due to the threat of his domain basically being an insta win where he'd essentially be unaffected by everything. Now, I'd love to cover Jodeo too, but we really don't know much about his stand yet. So, for now, we won't cover Part 9, since we still don't know the specifics behind how November Rain works. But he probably does have a lot of potential as a sorcerer, because his stand seems to have some sort of ability that's related to mass or gravity, and we've seen how strong people could be when they have abilities related to that. Like, just look at Yuki. So he probably has a ton of potential as a sorcerer. But that basically covers everything. Of all the JoJo's listed, who do you think would be best? Or if there's something else you think I should have mentioned that I didn't mention here, let me know below. And if this video does well enough, I'll probably make one of the main JoJo villains too. And again, remember that disclaimer. This is not a power scaling video, it's just a fun theoretical video. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.